What we want to do with this particular video is explain to law students who are going to experience the self-assessment process and then hopefully reflect on it to assist in our research. Think about the way that we write and the kind of language and text that goes into our law essays, but also other kinds of legal writing. For example, legal submissions that a barrister might make in court. So the reason why we want to think about this is because there are certain things that we think in our research team here at UTS are features of good academic writing. So features of good academic writing, our claim is that feature, these features are things like rhetorical moves or rhetorical shifts or discourse markers. So what are these? These are strings of text that are procedural. They indicate to the reader the writer's attitude to the text that they're writing. So let's just think about that a little bit. Why do we worry about whether we express attitude in relation to text? Why not just list a whole lot of concepts and leave it at that as part of a writing experience? Well that's because as lawyers our job is to persuade or argue in relation to a certain position. And the way that we do that in real life, in court, is we take a bunch of facts and then we take the law and we argue to the court that the way that we see that they should be interpreted favours a certain position or a certain outcome. So at its highest you could have two barristers appearing in court in the final submissions with the same law, the same facts and argue two entirely different attitudes that they feel should be preferred by the court in order to reach only one conclusion. So, for example, I might appear before the court and say, Your Honour, in relation to the removal of a caveat from a certificate of title, it's important to look at the law first and to look at what Section 74 of the Real Property Act says, but it's also useful to look at the common law, which is how judges have decided certain applications. And the sorts of things that the court would take into consideration are, and then I might talk about some cases. And my opponent might be referring to exactly the same cases. And then I might say, Your Honour, let's look at the facts of this particular case. And then I will argue certain things that should be persuasive or are more important than others. I might say, Your Honour should be more minded to the fact that my client has this property on the market for sale on Saturday and has already spent $4,000 in marketing and that's more important than what my learned friend would say is an argument in relation to the urgency of this because they want to borrow money against the property. And we might argue that one, one side should be favoured against the other because there's a certain balance of convenience. Now this is a classic legal approach to an injunction or removing an injunction from certificates of title. But you can see how if you express attitude towards the concepts, your argument becomes persuasive. Now that's what we want to do with essays. And the reason we do this is because law students when they write essays are practicing this skill and it gives us the opportunity to give them feedback. So, in the relation to the essays, what we want everyone to do today is to look at the draft essays that have either been written by you or provided as an exemplar by the research team and to think about whether the particular text you have in front of you has the procedural text that's going to assist you to convey attitude towards all of the concepts. So let's just narrow down and drill into what's the difference between the conceptual text and the procedural text. So conceptual text is me saying, for example, video conferencing is used in a lot of criminal cases where the victim doesn't want to appear in court before the accused. So the victim can appear by video. So there's an example of a concept. I haven't given any attitude in relation to that at all. But if I wanted to, there's a number of ways I could do it. And the examples are in a sheet that's been provided to you, either by UTS Online or by the research team. And the sheet says that what we want to do is use different types of procedural text. You can preview what you're going to say by saying, there are four stages. Or you could summarise by saying, to sum up so far. Or you could emphasise by saying, the key point here is... Or you could make a logical connective and say, however, and that means whatever you just said before, you're about to either add to or contrast with what's next. Now more specifically, we can note that 
we have examples of the function of rhetorical or discourse markers and then precise examples that you could use. So they're on the other side of the sheet that's been provided. And the whole way through, what you're doing is driving towards indicating a position. And your final position is always indicated with a preface like, the preferred approach would be, or weighing up the benefits and the costs, it is noted, or it, it can be seen that we have shown. And this is exactly what lawyers do. By avoiding journalism or philosophy or simple histories, what lawyers do is find a way to be persuasive by indicating attitude in a way that is scholarly and also that indicates to the reader precisely how they should regard the particular concepts that have been explained in that piece of text.